Just before we dive into this week's episode of Not So Fit Couple Podcast, I just want to quickly tell you about a competition that we're going to be running for the podcast. This is going to be a YouTube channel exclusive giveaway that we're going to be running through the month of April. So at any point through April, all you will need to do to win one of the prizes or the prize, which is going to be a nice big giveaway supplement bundle with a load of other goodies in there worth a few hundred pounds, whilst also getting the next micro school challenge for free on us is just head over to the youtube channel if you are listening on itunes or spotify the link will be in the show notes all you will need to do is is two things one make sure that you are subscribed to the youtube channel the not so fit couple podcast and number two leave a preferably positive review on one of the videos through april and then we will be picking the winner of the podcast giveaway at the end of april to be with a chance make sure you do the two things and enjoy this week's up. Hello and welcome back to the Not So Fit Couple podcast with your hosts, Lucy Davis. And Benjamin Holden. What a beautiful day. <laughs> Why was that so funny? It actually it actually has been a glorious day in the UK today. Okay. In England. Which is a really funny comment. It's well, this is the thing. I always introduce it and then I just look at you and you're just blank. Because I'm so just... I said, what a beautiful day. <laughs> Go on, crack on. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Stop now. Do you know what Alice just said as we were coming on the podcast, by the way? <laughs> she said, I fucking stink. <laughs> I need a bath. Well, do you know what I had? I just did, and girls, sometimes you relate. Like, it's been really hot today. I'm not quite used to it. I had a shower this morning, but I just reached over my bottle and I was like, oh my God, I fucking stink. Like, you just... what is going on? I'm going to get a shower ASAP Rocky after this. I'm glad someone said that because I've been thinking all day. Yeah, well, that's just rude. Perforating. Is that the word, perforating? No, I don't... Okay, I'm just I'm just that's a little weird. bit, like... I'm a bit hot and a bit uncomfortable. And it actually probably sums up the topic that we're talking about in today's well, podcast we dive into as well. It, we're having a, a kombucha, is that what you call Kombu- it? I say kombucha, but it is a kombucha. Basically, Lucy is choosing all the foods I eat today. So I'm not allowed them on today. I've got to have a kombucha. The full video is going to be up on my... U- is that not what you call it, kombucha? I say kombucha, but it is a kombucha. It's fermented grape. It's it tastes I like absolute, fermented no, piss, by the way. Um, kombucha is one of the things that I absolutely love. Like, I've had it for quite yeah, a few no years wonder, now. Yeah, no wonder, because when you get them, I get given all the shite flavours, like apple, whatever. No, no, which, apple no, crisp and cherry plum Which delicious. tastes like cheap cider. I mean, it's got an acquired taste. It's a bit like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. I think I it's just it. you hate it or you hate it. But, yeah, so we're doing that today. The YouTube video will be up on my channel Probably the same week that you're watching this, to be honest. So if you want to dive over there and see Lucy choose whatever. I think we've started with pretty weird choices. I had like a cheese and vegetarian sausage toasted sandwich with broccoli this morning. Yeah. How weird is that? That's not weird at all. It was just like a vegan style breakfast. No, it wasn't. It was like if you were in a hotel and you come down late, it's like, oh, it's five minutes past 11. And all the good stuff's been eaten or put away and the shit stuff left. That was what the plate was. Yeah, well, to be fair, you gave me no opportunity to go to the shop at like 9 a.m. this morning. So you kind of had what was in the fridge. <laughs> exactly. So the shit left over is, is yeah. that exactly what it was. Well. So we'll move We'll move on anyway. Today's topic is very relevant to what both me and Lucy have been speaking about on social media this week. And I also think it's something that's been more relevant and prevalent over the last couple of weeks and months i'd say lockdown's massively highlighted it and there just seems to be a lot of it on social media at the moment and what we're referring to is online bullying cyber bullying trolling i say trolling i'm sure it's trolling we've we just we, i think we deciphered this before trolling is quite american is it and troll, oh, american trolling trolling is you very uk yeah, well, it is that it's bullying, isn't it, online? Mm-hmm. Whatever you want to refer to it yeah. as. Yeah, so I actually pulled, I think we'll dive in first. I pulled the definition up just so we could completely round up what it is. And I also like to go for a couple of stats. Mm. So cyberbullying or cyber harassment is a form of bullying or harassment using electronic means. Cyberbullying and cyber harassment are also known as online bullying. It has become increasingly common, especially among teenagers, as the digital sphere has expanded and technology has advanced. Mm-hmm. I definitely agree with those. I think the word... Sorry, how did you describe it then? Cyber harassment. Cyber harassment. That's actually a very... I've never heard it being described as that, but that's how it feels. I would agree. And 
I, I know this isn't the de- definition of it, but when I f- think of bullying sometimes, I think of it as like repetitive, like you're doing something repetitively, whereas maybe that's why they've used the terminology cyber harassment as well, because it can be like a one-off thing where someone's just harassed someone online. Yeah. And can I just state the actual definition of trolling in terms of social media? Can we call it trolling? I think we might just have to d- agree to disagree on that Can you say it one. my way as well? Trolling. 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 Yeah. Trolling. Doesn't roll off the tongue very well, does it? Anyway, trolling. You look so beautiful today. Thank you. <laughs> trolling is defined as creating discord on the internet by starting quarrels or upsetting people by posting inflammatory or mm. off-topic messages in an online community. Basically, a social media troll is someone who purposely says something controversial in order to get a rise out of other users. That part's interesting because that is what happens. I think it happens where they get a kick out of it. So if something happens, say yes. they say something negative, a troll will comment something with the intention of having a backlash. 100%. They're usually looking for a reaction or it's making them feel good, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So I have pulled them, pulled them, pulled up some statistics because I think I we had this discussion last night, and this is the reason why we're doing the podcast today because me and Lucy spoke about it. I had to put a post about it myself up this week, which I'll go into in mm-hmm. further detail. But me and Lucy had a discussion on it last night, and there's a couple of like suggestions and reasons why I thought it happened, and I think some of these stats back it up. So the first stat was that about 37% of young people between the ages 12 and 17 have been bullied online. 30% have had it happen more than once. And this is the stat that I said to you yesterday that I felt was more common. And it's that girls are actually more likely than boys to be both victims and perpetrators Mm -hmm. of cyberbullying. 15% of teen girls have been the target of at least four different kinds of abusive online behaviors compared with the 6% of um, young ge- the young generation so that they're concerned about cyberbullying. So like I said to you, I just feel the, the worst type is always female on female. And again, this isn't me being sexist. This is just a opinion and a perspective that I've seen online. And also as a guy, I've had guys comment stuff i've had girls comment stuff and dm before i don't get as much as you and i certainly don't get hardly any of of females and he and the very minimal stuff that i get like when a, a guy does something i'll just be like oh well fuck off you see you nt and then it's generally the end of it when i see some of the, your dms and see some of your comments it's so bitchy and it's back do you know what back, though and it's multiple comments and it, the horrible 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 disgusting comments and it's there is some guys in there, but I feel like the most toxic ones tend to be like female and female. Yeah, the the definitely the two most toxic ones in the past week or so, or the couple of weeks that I can remember, have directly come from women. And like you said there, and I think girls are more bitchy. I went to an all girls school for God's sake. Everyone used to constantly bitch, and it was draining. And Obviously, I can't pair, can't compare that to going to a mixed school, but girl, girls were bitchy, and I think that's more prevalent on social media. It like it's been pulled across from just doing it, you know, face to face to doing it online because they can hide behind a screen and they're just able to do it. Like they actually feel comfortable writing those things to other people, and I think we are going to go into. I think like a few of our personal experiences, I've definitely got two that just kind of yeah. really sent me off. What what was it like going to an all girls school? It was great. I I personally. But did loved you find it. it bitchy? It was bitchy. Can't have been that bitchy though, because there was literally like twelve of you in the school. No, there wasn't. That was my primary school. Yeah. That was I went to a mixed primary school. There was about eight in my year. <laughs> it was a really why is that so hilarious? You got like, eight people in your year. Yeah. There was eight Christ. of us. There should be more than eight people in, in my class. In the class below, I think there was 14. There was 89 people in the whole school. That's a posh with school, With teachers. It? It, was, it was one of those primary schools that you had to kind of get selected for. So Meg got in. You got so selected when you have to go si- into primary school? 
Well, I can't remember how mum worded it, but it was really kind of like you had to apply to go. Was the headmaster called Winston? No, she was called Mrs. Teal. Mrs. She was Teal. great. Teal. Okay. Like teal, like the colour. And then the... But, but Megan got in, yeah. which kind of automatically means your younger sister gets in. Oh, because that's about... You basically got the sorry I got then. the fucking sorry version to get in, but no, I did have a super small primary school, but I went to an all-girls school in terms of high were school. In that? I don't know. More... <laughs> more than 89 more it wasn't than 89. massive i mean there's, in the whole school more than 89 there's more than 89 people in the whole school yeah oh my god i'm so, sorry i think you've misunderstood me no right let me because in say for example when i went to year seven yeah my secondary school mm. in basically we had three houses yeah mm. grenfell ruskin faraday and <laughs> what are you laughing at <laughs> they sound funny it's we the, had like Pendle, Heapy. Um, they're even worse. Okay. It sounds like cheap peas from the no, middle. Pendle Hill. But we had these three houses and then within each house, those classes, those three classes in each house. In each year? Yeah. There's about, no, no, no. Listen. So in my year, year seven, yeah. Altogether, there was nine classes and each one had 30 people and that's in one year. So 270 people. In one year. And in there I was seven, eight, that. nine, ten, eleven. So we had like a like thousand people in our school. I think we had like a hundred each year in it per year in secondary school. Yeah, we had way more. Yeah. That, 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 I actually did like the, the whole guy thing because if something happened, it was like you go onto the playground, there'd be a fight and you shake hands and that'd be the end of it. Yeah, but you went to a an, a girl and guy school. I didn't, didn't it was you? an all guy school. Oh, did you go to all guy school? I yeah. didn't know that. I, didn't know why I, I was actually quite, a lot of people used to take the piss out of that. Yeah, they did with me. But I feel like whenever there was like, because there was another old girl school close, whenever the guys with the girls, the guys would show them, try and be Billy Big Dick and it caused more kind of like tension and Mm. animosity than if it was just those guys. I think for like girls as well, because at at that age, you know, like year seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, you kind of start becoming very aware of like your looks and makeup and things. Nobody gived a shit at at our school because you're in an old girl school, like you're not trying to impress anyone and you actually went to kind of like learn. Do you know what I mean? Like you Mm. actually went to educate yourself. You weren't worried about like, um, body image and things I guess I don't think it was as prevalent in an all girls school because you're not thinking oh my god my crush is in my class yeah. like you're I generally wasn't concerned yeah, awesome. at all I wasn't you go bothered in, like, you, I, could, I went in some days like my fucking hair was up my ass like which I think I think that was actually really great and if I would love to send my kid to like an all girls school mm-hmm. not he's a guy though I was yeah no and also I'm not pregnant by Can the way I just, this is this is kind of not the same lines but it's along with like cyber stuff I was telling Carla's story yesterday but when I was in secondary school, I don't know if I told you what yet. Oh my god! Basically, I was in. Do you know? Do you remember like lunch times when you're in in school, and you could go in the computer room like every now and again, and like some of you could sit in the computer room and go on the computers and stuff. I think we just did that anyway. And every well, we didn't in ours. Like some people were allowed okay. to, and some people weren't allowed to. I can't remember the exact reasons why, but I was in there anyway, and I was on the sitting on the computer. And I was just typing away, pit, doing whatever, pissing around. I was with my mates in there. There's about 30 of us in there in, in different computers. And all of a sudden, everyone started looking around what was going on. And I looked around at other people's computers. And whatever was on my screen was on all their screens. So yeah. I had control of all the screens. Why? I don't know. Do you like when you, your teacher used to take over the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, I had the power. It was great. It was a great moment. So obviously, as, as, a, as a guy who was 15 does, I went... And at this time, they didn't have like the security. The, you went on porn, didn't went you? Went on Bang Bro straight away, yeah. And um, I actually remember the porn star who went on. She's called Gina Michaels. You remember her name? It was a very obvious porn star at that time. She's not on my fucking bedroom walls now, is she? Well, no, because we share a bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, pull, Go on. pull up this. Gina Michaels comes up on the screen and. All the lads fucking cry and laugh, and they've all got big porn stars <laughs> ass on the screen. Yeah, that's the end of it anyway. Oh, I thought the teacher would have come in. No, or listen, something. listen, it continues. So I go home, normal day, but we've gone home, you know, finished school, that like you do. And I got a phone call off the head of house. His name was Mr. Wright, like big bloke, scary bloke. Hello, Ben. Um, I think we need to have a, a serious discussion when you come into school tomorrow about what you've been doing on the school computers, 
hacking the school computers and the images that were shown. On my lunch break today, I was sitting having a screen <laughs> and <gasps> a large bottom of an email <laughs> pulled up on my screen. I couldn't get it off. It'd gone on every person's computer across the whole That's school. That's actually really dodgy. The whole you could school. have got some people fired. So why why could I have got people fired? Because if, if a teacher was found looking at porn <laughs> and they couldn't get it off. <laughs> That's really not okay. Anyway, I'm going to completely... No, I haven't finished yet. One sec. for God's sake. So, I come in the next day. I have to go to the IT department anyway. And they start going mad at me. You've hacked all the wireframes of the school system. You've, you were like a cyber hacker and all this. You, there's no way you could have just accidentally stumbled across this. It takes like intricate detail to be able to get into the system, display it to all screens. I was like, mate, I'm 14-year-old. I have fucking no idea about computers. Like, I just saw that I was on my own screen and I thought I'd type in bang bros and go on something that I thought would be funny for five minutes. Yeah. Is that the end of the story? Why was that not funnier? I thought the funnier bit was before. It was funny, but that that was like the whole cyber thing. But anyway, that was my school story. Yeah. Moving away from that, we got way off topic there. Talking about trolling. Can I just go into the stats? You can, yeah, if that's what, actually what you're going to talk I about. I am going to talk about now, yeah. So this is the one that I said to you yesterday as well, and Lucy's actually decided to take some time off Instagram, haven't you? Yeah, I'll go into that after you've spoke about. This is interesting because the stats show that Instagram is a social media site where most young people report experience cyberbullying, with 42% of those surveys experience harassment on the platform. It's the main platform where people find they're, they're cyberbullied. I can 100% vouch for that. I used to think it was YouTube, me. Yeah, even though... Do you know what it is with YouTube? It's not as much kind of trolling. More aggressive, I think. It's more creeps. Genuinely, that I've had to block so many disgusting words on YouTube. That's a good thing, I think. Really good thing, which YouTube have implemented, that you can block specific words. I'm not going to say what they are because they're disgusting words, you can imagine. Why haven't Instagram implemented I think like Instagram have, though. Because apparently I've had loads of DMs. I've not been on my Instagram... But I've seen loads come through saying, have you blocked specific words? I'm going to have to just ask like Lizzie or something and just say, do you know how I can block specific words? But the thing with trolling, and this is why it's so different, just kind of like negative comments and abuse. A troll is purposely going on to make a comment and cause an argument. So they have an intention to get a reaction from you. Whereas sometimes people say to me, oh, you look like a man. Oh, you're on steroids. They're kind of just negative comments. That mm-hmm. I'm just like, cool, thank you so much. I've had horrible ones, haven't I? Like, really disgusting. Yeah. But you kind of can just block those out. The reason that I've decided to take some time off Instagram is because it's happened quite frequently during lockdown. Like you said, mm. like, trolling has got a lot worse. It's very intense. And I was actually speaking to James Smith about this because the trolling about me happened on one of his posts. And we were discussing that people are just in a really, really bad place. Obviously, a lot has gone on this year. It's been a really hard year and last year was also really difficult. However, that can't be an excuse for people to talk to people the way they do online in terms of trolling. Mm -hmm. So the one that specifically happened to me yesterday, it was actually the end at the, well, kind of like at about two o'clock yesterday. And... I there was a post about like abs you know ab workouts doing this doing that like you guys know I'm very open that I don't really train abs and I've had them since I was about five years old I'm very transparent with it why are you looking at me like that (laughs) (laughs) I'm really transparent with my approach to fitness and my very no bullshit approach and that's what me and Ben kind of voice that's what we share with other people and I was so heavily trolled yesterday it actually made me break down in terms of we got back and I was just in tears and it doesn't that doesn't just happen from negative comments that happens from a particular person repetition repetition that's what trolling is when they come back and they come back and it's it got to the point when I've never ever done this in my whole four or five years on Instagram I put up a story saying literally fuck this i'm not going on instagram i'm not going to my dms i don't want to read them i don't want to go on my comments i'm really sorry i just need to take at least 24 hours off the app completely and 
it's really horrible because everyone always says like, oh, don't listen to them. You can just deal with it. Like, don't worry about it. They're coming from a really bad place. I'm like 100%. I know they're not in a good place. I don't know these people. The worst thing is they're comfortable enough to say that to someone else. I could never, you know, some of those things that I see on some of the comments and yours and other people's and on my, and some of my DMs is I could never imagine myself saying anything. I couldn't imagine saying something like that to someone I absolutely hated. It's mad. I think the thing is, I think the ones that you get affect me more than the ones that I get. Because the ones that I get, I'm actually not that awesome about. Yeah. And also, and that's, what, that's why I come is. back to them and then I get in arguments. But I never argue back with anyone of mine because I just, I know if like, it's just pointless. But then when the people do it to you, I'll argue with them. I think that's why I've, I've had a couple of words blocked before because I've quite frequently used the C-U-N-T word to describe other people who have left horrible comments. Yeah. And I think that's, I've been penalised for that before. I think what becomes really upsetting with with why I get so upset is because they, they penalise me for the way I look. So, like, for example, the one yesterday, I was absolutely torn to shreds by this one particular troll for having abs. And it was kind of like, okay, go and tell my five-year-old self to not have abs. Do you know what's so not- mad about that, though? <laughs> Is that that t- same type of person will be commenting on, like, posts about larger women or obesity and stuff like that going, oh yeah big is beautiful like we should all be inclusive but then going onto your page and we're going this is toxic you've got a fucking abs it's it's yeah. uh, disorderly and it's like you shouldn't be doing this you shouldn't be promoting this and that same person is talking about like equality in the with bodies and in, in this in the fitness space it's fucking mad yeah because... it's gone like two, it's gone like 360 and i don't agree with body shaming in any degree by the way and we spoke about this topic a lot of times on the podcast to do with fat shaming but at the same time time you shouldn't be you shouldn't be going at people because they're in shape because they've worked hard because they've tried something and even more so from someone from a perspective who has openly admitted mistakes in the past that they've had not mistakes even that they've had bad relationships with food and openly talk about it to try and help other people i just think that's bullshit but then people don't look that far into people's stories either no they don't at all and they never they never read captions they never read comments they don't actually understand the person that they're trolling so he's I don't know if it was a girl or a guy actually yesterday. I couldn't I can't tell from the name, but they're a therapist, which makes it even worse. I think that's so unless fucking weird. unless they're fake a fake therapist, but they, they are like a real person. Um and they, supposedly they were a therapist, which made it up like everyone was just so going off at this person, weren't they? Good luck cutting any business. Yeah, literally. But this person saying I I physically cannot be empowering to other women because I have abs that I as starve myself that I promote unhealthy eating that I do this I do that and it was just constant and it's just absolutely mind baffling and it reminds me of the one where I'd posted my eating disorder recovery yeah. and I was so proud I was so happy posting those pictures of my before and after and like you know how I how I was getting on and I think it was eating sort of awareness week I can't even remember and this one girl messaged me being like how dare you post yourself with your abs flared in the picture, I was just sat down. Yeah, abs look popping. They look fucking great. Not my problem. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you're the worst person to promote eating disorders. You're promoting eating disorders now by looking like that. And the thing is, that's n- that's not my problem. Mm-hmm. And like you said yesterday, I said to you, I'd rather not fucking have a six pack. If it's going to cause this much stress in my life, I'd rather not. But please, please crack on and tell my five-year-old genetics. Sorry, can you not let her grow up that way just so she doesn't get trolled? And that's the thing that's so upsetting for me because I'm like, I can't change that. And I shouldn't want to change that. No, you shouldn't want to. That's the thing with any type of bullying though because people pick up on people's... By the way, I think that's it's it's an absolute minority because that's the weirdest statement ever that the thing that a lot of people will desire is being trolled by someone else. And that's the perfect example that these people are the ones who are envious and the ones who, I've said it many a times, will see that as you're holding up to a mirror to them, showing them what they haven't got or what they're not willing to do. And they will look at you and look at themselves and think, I'm a piece of shit who can't be asked to do anything. Yeah. And to make myself feel better, I'm going to say, it's out of my control. I'm going to attack the thing that made me feel that way to try and make me feel a little bit better. And that's what a lot of the justification will be psychologically or under the 
under the hood, so to speak, sometimes. And it's just bullshit because yeah. and and they know that and it's because it's it's they something they deem which is unachievable and that's why they try and put it out to be that way to make themselves feel better but the, the thing that's really bad about stuff like that is and again i've i've pu- pulled up another stat from i think it was enough and is enough website and is that young people who experience cyberbullying are at risk are at greater risk than those who don't for both self-harm and suicidal behaviors which is you can obviously clear see clearly see why that would be the case and i think there's been a lot of cases in the media over the last couple of years which have sort of been around this topic i know that one that was definitely tied to this was the caroline flack mm-hmm. where like the abuse she was getting from the media and she she got horrible comments and abuse for years by the way horrible she was disgusting and i think there was another guy from love island i think mike yeah i so think uh, yeah, my his was a direct effect because of load of abuse, and people don't think about that sometimes. That there's just someone behind that account, and even do you know what I think's bad as well? And this is I saw this, and I even had this when I first started doing content online. Is that there'll be people who are just starting accounts who are scared to make video content or scared to put themselves out up or scared to put photos up because they're scared of getting comments, and usually they're scared of getting comments from friends and family. I used to get comments from like my mates sometimes, like just taking the piss out of me because I've done a video on like personal training or fitness and they're like just laughing and putting shit and they don't realize how like hurtful that is to some people like when they're really trying to put themselves out there yeah and that's the type of person that should be encouraging you and that's why i think that quote is important that like people will like comment and like and stuff and like rihanna's stuff or, pu- or puma and all this kind of and people who don't know but they won't fucking double tap the mate stuff or write a comment on the mate stuff to say how well they're doing it's so fucking so cliche that yeah back so- your mates yeah, one hundred percent. And the the one thing that I think's quite weird, I guess from, and this is like a common theme that I've picked up where people just say like, don't listen to the hate, don't stoop to their level, um, ignore the negativity. But I think trolling has got so bad. Why should people have to ignore it? Why can't it be spoken about? And I know loads and loads of um other people who have been heavily, heavily trolled. I wouldn't say I've been heavily trolled, I'd just say I've been trolled. That laws and things are actually more so getting put in There's place There's quite now. a few laws. I was having a look at them today, yeah. Because it's it's like that example you used. Well, if, I was, a, if a kid I was going to say that one. Can I just say it quickly? Yeah. Because this is what I said to Lucy yesterday. Because a lot, a lot of people's come back to stuff is, and I've seen this a lot of times, when it comes to online bullying and that kind of time of don't be a snowflake it's not about being a fucking snowflake you can be offended you don't have to take shit off people and people saying oh if you can't be on this platform and put a content expect it back you shouldn't be here and the the way that i explained it to lucy was that that's the worst comment to make that's like saying that your or your child shouldn't be on the playground if they they can't take a bit of bullying or they can't expect to be bullying. Why why should a child be on a playground and get bullied? You'd fucking never ever take it. So why should people take it if they're on a social media platform in a field and just be expected to take it? You'd never say that. Oh, you, you should be expected in this playground. Yeah. You'd never. So why it's should it, people take it and expect it? It's because it's so normal, isn't it? And I do think actually we've really differentiated a negative comment to a troll. And that's really, really important. Negative comments, yeah, cool, sound, crack on. Tell me I'm a bunch of te- uh, on a bunch of steroids. Tell me I look like a man. Kill them with kindness. That's not a problem. It's specific people who attack and attack and attack you online. There's a big difference because you're fe- you feel like you're getting harassed. I think this person yesterday on this particular comment I'd made, all I said on James's post is, yes, thank, like, thank God, abs yeah. are genetics stating a very clear point and on this comment thread i think there's like 85 to 90 comments for this one person going back and forth back and forth with like other people i replied like once i've not been on instagram since but it's when they persistently come back at you mm. and people are like yeah just block them i'm like yeah you can block one of them there's there's websites for trolling there's something called that's, tattle. that's the worst thing people then take it offline off the platform so then go and bitch behind people's back they have got to be the low lives of society like the absolute vomit and 
tears on the bottom of fucking society to, to mm-hmm. go offline to talk about pe- well to go like offline social media to talk about other people like you've got to have some time in your life to set up for them to do that kind of shit what the fuck do you get out of that no i know it's, it's absolutely pitiful and i put a post up about some of the, the things the comments that i've had the other day and as a guy i don't know if i would say it, as I, said, I shouldn't say as a guy too because i think it affects a lot of guys as well but for me it doesn't doesn't massively affect me that much mm. it only affects me when you get them and do you think yours are more negative comments than like persistently being messaged by like the same yeah. people yeah i don't i don't get too many persistent ones i'd get like a, a couple where i had so it was like oh you got like uh, you got massive ears like that's that's one of the comments I've had a couple of times, and do you know what? That's quite handy, especially like when you got when you need to wear a mask in lockdown. They're fucking great. Exactly. And <laughs> the other one, I get a lot of chest ones because I've got pectus yeah. cranatum. So in like some workout videos, I get like where's your chest, bro? Like stuff like that. And then ones don't bother me too much because I've actually put like the best YouTube videos I've ever put up have been like ones like to help people like grow the chest that they've got pectus uh, cranatum. So. Again, that doesn't bother me because I'm quite happy to put content out around that and help people. And then the other one I had, which I put up, and I've had this one like a while ago in the DMs and I just pulled it back up the other day, was people being like, go and kill yourself or go and die. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Why the fuck would you say that to someone? I don't know. Do you know if, like, it was actually, if someone said that to someone who was actually genuinely on the edge and thinking about it, how guilty would that person then feel? This is the thing. They would never ever say it's your face oh no chance zero chance which makes it kind of worse After keyboard warriors because if someone could come up to my face and say you look like a man i'm like cool thanks yeah. cool crack on fuck off but they don't do it they no. never ever would do it to your face which i think it's why it's such a bitter thing and i was like googling around before i was looking at some research into how you can actually actively prevent being trolled and the thing that i find quite hard is that when you work on social media and it's your job because a lot of the recommendations were to um disable comments on your feed to block so you can't get any dms to keep all platforms private and the thing about that is when it's your job you can't really do that and 100%, I agree, we put ourselves out there. You've got to expect a bit of negativity. That's not a problem. You can deal with it. When it's persistently trolling, It, I think it's quite hard when you work on social media because you can't just block every single comment. You mm-hmm. can't just block every single DM. It's part of your job to reply to comments and reply to DMs. So I think that's, I don't know the answer to that. I was pulling up some bits to do this about... Um advice that i've been given by people obviously one of them is don't respond i think that's the easiest one to do yeah ignore it because whenever you do you just throw fuel on the fire it's just going to grow and that's what they want they want that reaction they want that spark from you and all the best way to respond is i remember some guy remember that ad that we did the facebook ad and the guy commented on it saying you've got the gayest voice i've ever heard yeah that was just ridiculous and they but like went in with loads of other stuff and i was like hey mate i actually can't help the way that I was born or the way that i speak but I've just been on your profile and it's something like I think the profile was picture with a dog. Um I put some like great profile picture, dog looks awesome. He actually direct messaged me and said, Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so yeah. sorry, I was having a really bad day. Watch the ad and just put a comment on it. Yeah. Sometimes like if you upset the algorithm, not I don't mean like social media algorithm, like upset the balance of what that person's expecting back, because all that person's expecting back is an argument, that's probably what they want. If you sometimes upset that and go back with a comment which is really positive, generally, whenever you put positivity out, you're going to be met with positivity. If yeah. you put negative t- negative comments back, you're only going to get negative com- comments back. Yeah. And also, it makes you look like a way better person and it makes that person look so fucking stupid. So stupid. Imagine everyone else is going through that thread and this comment's calling you a cunt, a dickhead, and all this, and you're all saying back to them, Oh, wow, I actually really like your profile. There's some cool content on it, like your profile picture. How stupid does it make that person if they then come back and go, boom, like, you know what I mean? And this is the thing. You can never, ever stoop to someone else's level because you have to maintain your emotional distance. You have to keep level-headed when you do work on social media. Mm -hmm. It's kind of part and parcel. You don't stoop to their level. You don't say things 
back to them and the one thing that we always try and tell ourselves and I guess if anyone ever gets negative comments or gets trolled is to think okay this person must be in a really really bad place and I always just like dm them privately and say I hope you're doing okay Mm -hmm. I know you've made a really negative nasty comment I don't appreciate it but I hope you're doing okay they will probably come back and want to bite your head off because you've been kind to them Mm -hmm. And they can't comprehend why, why, why you haven't gone up to their level and why you haven't retaliated because that's what they crave. They want the retaliation. A lot of the time they want the attention on posts as well. So they're probably thinking, why the hell have you DM me? Like, why haven't you commented yeah. back and things like that? So DMing people privately, excusing their behavior and hoping they're okay. And it's, it's, that, it's that whole thing of like, you're not... It's like killing with kindness. You're not trying to kill them off. You're generally just saying, look, don't appreciate what you said. I hope you're doing okay. Yeah. That's the only thing that I could actually recommend to people. One of the other things that I took off some of the advice website was that they were saying, don't post online that you are being targeted. I know that you've already done that on story. I'm guessing that's because the trolls will probably see that and feel successful and what they're doing. Yeah, I sure didn't think about that. It's not something that you think about. I think I was so frustrated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but obviously, you were just telling people that like, you're just taking some time off. I suppose at the end of the day, weren't you? But that was one of the the things. And obviously, you can try and report them to the platform. Generally, with Instagram, you're not going to get a a message back because it is so difficult. I think you're going to, I think you can report abusive comments anyway, and they'll probably be taken down. But I think that's usually as far as it it goes. And I still think Instagram needs to implement some better systems and a better just like help center as well. Like yeah. it's so bad. And then obviously, the other result is if it's if it is uh, bad and you feel like shit from it and it's consistent, is to report to the police as well. Yeah. You never even think about doing that, do you? I, I know of some influencers who I'm friends with who where it's gotten so bad on external accounts like Tattle where they've had to report to the police for their own mental sake. And their own safety, as I imagine, so a lot of the time because they may not feel safe mm. while doing or where they are. So... It's definitely like taking those potential steps and even just talking to other people about it, I think takes a massive weight off your shoulders. Yeah, definitely. And one of the things that I know I'm not very good at is digital detoxing. And it sounds great, doesn't it? You know, have a digital detox, take some... that. So a digital detox isn't just taking time off social media. It's taking time off your phone, TV, computer tablet it's like everything so you'd get a digital detox of everything and it's often seen as a way of focusing on real life Mm -hmm. and what's going on in the real world and social interactions and without distractions of the media and things like that and I literally said to Cal before this podcast I just struggle because I know a lot of people rely on me they rely on my content I've had so many messages being like, you've got me through lockdown and I love I love that. I know, but you, at the same time, what I'd say to that is you're on a lot of other platforms that people can pick up your from as well if they really wanted to. Yeah. You, I think You I, don't I, have to stay on stuff for other people. At the same time, it comes back to that thing of the whole gas mask thing on a on an airplane. If you don't look after yourself first, you can't then help other people either. Like, you need to fill up your own tank before you can then help other people with theirs and that's what's got to always be the priority is you. Yeah, definitely. And I think what I've done, I've been off it for like a whole day and I'm going to post this evening saying like, thank you for the message because there's hundreds mm-hmm. of messages and it's always very, very appreciative. But I'm I'm openly going to say I'm not getting back to any comments or any DMs because you guys know for both me and Ben, if you do follow us on socials, we're very active in replying to people because it's a nice thing to do. Yeah. We're appreciating that you've taken the time to send us a DM so we're replying to you but I think for just like my mental state at the moment I'm not going to look at my comments or my dms probably for like a week or so and just not and just not I don't need to give you a reason why it's just something that I think I need to practice because I'm not very good at it I think the thing that we were speaking about before and, and understanding why people do it I think there's a couple of reasons why people do troll one of them is because they want the attention. They want to try and get followers over to their own page. They're doing it as like a fish bait kind of scenario to try and pull people so that you can look at their profile. And the one thing that like you shouldn't do is I don't think like you should put story up and tag them in and be like, this person's a troll. 
I know that usually you're doing it to like try and get support from other people, but generally more people are going to go to their page and look at their page and drive more traffic towards them. I think the less traffic you can drive towards them, the better. That's the one thing I've never done. If I've ever posted someone's comment or a, or a troll, you link the I, thread. Sc- I scribble out their name. No, I don't link the thread. Okay. I scribble out everyone's name so people can just see the comments. And I always, always get messages saying, why don't you keep their names on so we can go and abuse them in their DMs? They don't want that. And I'm like, because that's the exact, re- what they've just done to me, you will then do to them. And I know it's sticking up for someone who you love to follow and things like that, and you want to be there to support them. But that doesn't actually solve anything. It won't help their mental state, whatever kind of situation they're in. But it's me sharing, look, this is what can happen on mm-hmm. social media. These are some of the comments, but I will not be sitting here showing you who's made those comments. Mm-hmm. The other reason is a term which is known as negative social potency. What does that mean? Basically means that there's actually people out there who enjoy causing harm to other people. There's just people who enjoy it. People who like seeing just other online. Or in, is that in like life? A fa- oh, in life. Okay. People just like seeing other people in, in 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 mental or psychological or physical pain. There's people who enjoy that stuff. And they're okay with that. Yeah. Well, they enjoy it. Not just they're fucking okay with it. They enjoy it. It's sick. You can't comprehend things like that, can you? It's it. it you kind you kind of think. Okay, you know what though? What happened in their life? People. I've said this before. Everyone likes seeing people rise to the top, but people like seeing the person at the top fall even more. In terms not of all like people are saying people. yeah people mm-hmm. like seeing people it happens loads of times with stuff like people will back people and people like successful people they love seeing them fall even more when someone successful pull, falls people fucking take to social media and it makes me sick like they love seeing like someone at the top just fall from a great height and that's it as a as like a nation or whatever it's fucking sickening to say because they just like seeing people fail people some people just get like a real high out of it Mm. and then why why you see people comment on stuff because they want to see that people fall or try and call people out for certain stuff in a hope that they might fall it's weird it's weird it's a very weird culture i'd say if if some if someone's a part of that and enjoys seeing people fail and we've spoke about in different podcasts where jealousy is sometimes seen as a really horrible trait jealousy isn't always a horrible trait but there's a big difference to being jealous of someone's success or actually wanting to see them fail Mm -hmm. there's just the wrong behavior to have and i think if you're if anyone's listening to this who ever thinks i do actually quite like it when i see someone fail i think just like reassess your behaviors a little bit and just think about those things because it might be something well subconscious that you might just have to work on with yourself to get over but if you are thinking love it when i see people fail love it when a successful person fails that's probably time to just reassess something and just think why do i actually think like that is there something that happened to me it do i did i have like a trauma was there something? Because like with my therapist at the moment, we're trying to trigger the points of where my anxiety actually mm-hmm. started, where my OCD started, which was probably from the age of like 12 when I really, really started getting into my swimming and I felt really overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. And 12, that was, how many years ago was I with 12? 12 years ago I was 12, <laughs> which is just crazy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And th- I said this to you yesterday and I know this is really hard to do, was a really good way to think about it. And again, I think it was Lucy Lord who gave this comment. Because it doesn't matter where you go, by the way. It doesn't matter whether you're online, offline, in the media. The more successful you get, the, the more there's going to be some negative comments. Or even if you're not successful, there's going to be negative comments. And it's up to us whether we what we do with those negative comments, whether we choose to pick them up and address them and take them on board, or we just leave them be. And it's exactly the same, I think she said, like it's like we're going to pick up a rock. We can choose to bear the weight of that rock or we can choose to just let it be and, and be there. It's exactly the same with those negative comments as well. We can just let them be negative comments and try and ignore them. And I know that is hard to do. And it's about building yourself into that mindset and that place that you can be able and, and willing to do that because then it's going to be a lot better for your mental health. I know that's really hard to do at first, but you've got to think in the long term, it's going to be a lot better for you. It's like anything though, isn't it? Like something won't happen overnight. Yeah. 
it'll take a while to do something and I know at some point in the next few months I'll probably have like a whole week and I will actually do a digital detox no laptops no phones no computers no social media but for now a good starting step for me is not looking at comments not looking at dms and it is a stepping stone thing I think for me personally anyway talking from like an influencer I guess perspective I know that'll put me in a better headspace for the time being yeah well it's like someone who messaged today about what I thought was a really good comment is focusing your time at the moment on just being on the platform that you're enjoying or platforms that you're enjoying creating content on like sometimes I just I actually really like YouTube sometimes because I'm not always just producing educational content on there. I'll just go on there and have a fuck about it and post a video mm-hmm. of a day and what I've been doing. It's a bit more lifestyle based. There's not much pressure on it. I'm not trying to educate people. I'm just having I'm just like having a laugh on there. Like we've yeah. been I've been filming one today with you and it's just enjoyable. That's why I enjoy the podcast as well. When we talk about a bit of educational stuff, there's some good content in there. There's some good key takeaways, but we can also have a bit of a laugh and a bit of a chit chat as well. So it's just I think focusing sometimes on your energy and where. You get more positivity from just maybe just take a take a back seat sometimes from the one where there seems to be a lot of negative heat. Yeah, focusing your energy where you know you're going to feel, I guess, healthier within your mindset is one of the best things to do. And mm-hmm. I'd recommend that to anyone to do where focusing your energy on positivity is sometimes really important. And it's not saying completely just ignore every mm-hmm. negative thing and do this and do that. But depending on where you are with your headspace and where you are with your mental health, it is super important to sometimes put yourself first. Yeah. You're not being selfish. You're just, which is I something I actually need to learn. I'm not being selfish by not posting on Instagram for a while. I'm doing it because it's, I kind of have no choice at the moment mm-hmm. for my mental health. And it's something really important. I just want people to recognize that it's not a selfish act when you're doing something for yourself, it's, sometimes it is something that just has to be you gotta done. You've got to be selfish to be selfless sometimes. Yeah, definitely. That's mega important. Something that we don't we do not do enough of, and I think the only time we usually switch off is when we've been on holidays, and even sometimes then it takes like a couple of days to be like, well, we're actually fucking on holiday at the moment. Like we, chill, we chilled out a little bit. I w- this is so mad because I was saying to Kyle before, I've never taken like a work, ho- as in like, you know when you have like holiday, you take yeah. time off work. Not, I'm not saying go abroad, where you generally just take time off work. We don't do that. I've I've done it in previous jobs where like I've never done that. Yeah, but I worked in places like where I was. In, I worked in Halfords. I wasn't taking my fucking toolkit with me and, <laughs> and fitting a light bulb for the guy down the road. Do you know what I mean? No, I know. So I've taken I've taken time off in those respects. But it depends on what type of job you're in. Like yeah. some some career paths or like it's it's not nine to the, the industry we we work in is not nine to five. No, it's not. Online, isn't nine to five? Online, 24 hours, isn't it? And that's why you can quite easily get caught up in that loop. But that's why we, we obviously booked that holiday to America, which was fucking 2019 now. And we've rebooked it for... 2022. 2022. We rebooked it three years ago because of COVID. We haven't been able to go. And I think that was going to be the real first time that we... I said we're definitely 100% switching off from what we're doing. Yeah. It even stresses me out, doesn't it? Just for me to kind of think about taking time off because I'm very... Go, go, go. Yeah. constant and it is something that i'm continuously working on and people think, would see that as you need to take time off so to speak like if you're enjoying it like you don't need to stop doing what you enjoy yeah but like if it, you're just seeing it as if it's if you're seeing it as work and it's stressful and you need to pull back on it all the type of stuff that you're doing on that time or posting just need to be a little bit more lifestyle based around what you're doing so you're not stressing about putting certain bits of content up mm simple as that the one thing i was going to ask you and you don't need to be embarrassed by this don't worry about it and you can just be honest about it because i'm going to try and think myself do you think you have ever online trolled someone or left like what would deem as being like trolling comments no no nope i know i've not I think, I think I've... It, throughout my whole time I've ever been on Instagram, I've never done it, I've, but I'm also think, not very good with conflict. I don't think I've ever trolled someone. I've had arguments with people before. Um, have you... But but have you made the comment first? Yeah. Okay. I, just, I don't think that means I've trolled someone, though. I think there's a difference between 
having a debate with someone and then going and telling someone you're a twat, you're an ugly. You're like, I've the example. I did it yesterday. Yeah, but that wasn't you starting it. Was you were replying to no, the no, 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 on someone oh, else's okay. post about we were talking about like um, what eating a day kind of videos. Oh, that's not a negative comment though. You, you actually, you asked a question like, what can you just like explain to me about the video? Yeah, I think this is the thing. Like, that, there's a, there's a yeah, differentiation about between like maybe calling people out in the in the right way, mm-hmm. and again, this is the thing about when we see stuff online which we know is categorically wrong, I think we have a duty sometimes to say something to them, but we need to say it in the right way because that can easily stop a big conflict of, oh, you're bullying. I know Darren did this before when he was talking about the whole f- female thing and um, I think it was with Daniel Lloyd he was getting called a bully and uh, bullying females. It's not, and I think it's got to be done in the right way. It's got to be respectfully so it's not classed as trolling or bullying because you don't want to fall into that category. And that's the thing that I'm always conscious of before I post stuff. It's like the way that I'm being portrayed, but also I don't want to sit back and just watch people be posting toxic stuff on social media, which I know is going to have a greater effect on people. And in the long term, like they're going to have a poor relationship with food or a poor relationship with exercise or poor relationship with their mental health when I can potentially intervene at that point. I'm not saying I know everything either, by the way. I know some people will be like, stay in your lane. But if I feel like I need to say something, I need to say something, I'll try and say it in the right way. Because yeah. then sometimes people get the back up in the comments and that what turns into a fucking... Yeah, I, yeah I've yeah i never posted a negative comment. The only comment I can think I've made is when somebody who I think she has like over 800k was actually doing barbell hip thrusts really, really, really incorrect. Um, and I just made a comment just being like, hey, just with your barbell hip thrust, try and tuck your chin because you can see a huge hyperextension in your lumbar spine. Um, and she blocked me. <laughs> So that that wasn't coming from a place of negativity. Maybe I should have DM'd her, but it wasn't a negative comment. It was just saying, hey, here's a tip for your barbell hip thrust, just because Mm -hmm. in my head I'm thinking, you've got a huge platform. Please don't let anyone hip thrust like that. They will break their back. So it's never, that was never coming from a place of like, you're so shit. I think that's the thing though, is like uh, sometimes they're like, like it's not helpful. It's not about a popularity contest. Like you're not, sometimes, yeah, you might lose some like followers or you might lose some like people's, opinion of you but if you're morally doing the right thing great yeah no i agree i think that's pretty much everything i had down to the school yeah it is it actually feels like i've just had a bit of um bit of a, therapy a session. bit of a therapy session Enjoy because that. yeah i mean i i have struggled and it's like one of those things as well i definitely know when i'm being trolled because i talked to my sister about it do you know what I mean? Like, if something's really kind of, like, upset me and she knows I'm upset, I'll, I'll, I'll be on the phone to Meg. I mean, that's what annoys Rocky. me most and affects me most is that, like, when you're upset because it makes me really angry and I'll say sometimes stuff that I wouldn't usually say. Yeah. Would well, you remember it happened really, really bad in Lanzarote in the picture Cal took? And I couldn't even leave the car when you two went to the yeah. supermarket because I was crying my eyes yeah. out. And Cal came up to me. Because I just I was not in like a good headspace. The comments were absolutely gross, and I was just sat outside. And Cal came up to me and he's like, "You okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm fine." But he was like, "No, like you're actually not okay. Like it's made me really upset. Can we talk about yeah. it?" Because that's probably the first time as well we just taken Cal on. That was the first time he was probably introduced to like one of his close friends being mm-hmm. trolled. I think that's the thing is like when it happens to someone who who you're close to, someone you know, or someone's friends, and you. I care about that person if, uh, that's the type of thing that affects me more mm-hmm. than it does myself like yeah it just does yeah i think that's that's okay though i think that's normal it's like if, if it happens like my best friend fliss for example i'm fuming yeah you feel so angry and you want to help them by taking the anger <clears throat> for them yeah in some way or form and i just think what we spoke about today was really really important and it is a topic that yeah i think it's gone i think it's happened more during lockdown because people got less things to do people got more time and they're like just like hyper responsive to stuff and just want to fucking throw a, a dagger in amongst the works yeah but what we'll probably will do as well if we, we'll probably dig some resources and some links out to put in the show notes for where people can go to for if they need to speak to someone about cyberbullying, if they feel like they just need to speak to someone in general to have someone to talk to, mm-hmm. there's going to be resources to do so, resources to open up about. And it's just a good thing to do to get some things off your chest sometimes and speak to someone about it. 
because there could be something that's done about it and there might be a better way for you to be able to deal with it to put you in a better mental headspace moving forward as well and a better strategy to be able to deal with those kind of things yeah and never feel like it isn't valid mm-hmm. don't think you're being silly or yeah, something you know. like that if if you're not in in a good headspace you know speak to someone open up it's not it's not a place of weakness you just yeah 100%. you're realizing that you would like to speak to someone yeah you're not being a snowflake you don't need to man up you need to speak about it yeah also well, on a slightly different note <laughs> we now have the challenge enrollment waiting list open yes we do so as, as as if you want to be part of a community which is full of fucking awesome people where you are never going to be trolled by the way you're only ever going to get positive shit and rockets up your ass from them then join the micro school facebook community because it's full of a group of absolutely awesome people which is growing getting forever stronger forever better and it's full of just like-minded individuals who just want to better themselves every That's single so day great. and do cool shit yeah that absolutely amazing and the community is so positive yeah, and great. do you know what it's not even just one of those things where it's like they t- they talk about their feelings they talk about when they're not feeling okay mm-hmm. they're there to share how they feel and it's truly incredible it's completely worldwide so that link will be in the link for the youtube video i think is the best place to find it as well mm-hmm. and do, do you know why i like the facebook group as well though because even when I have days sometimes where I feel a little bit shit or I feel a little bit down or I feel like I can't be asked. And as a, even as a coach, I have this, like I'm only human, we're both only human. You can go there and I might not even say anything in the comments, I might not even say anything on the page, but I'll just look through what other people are doing and I'm be like, that's fucking awesome. Mm. Or you're fucking awesome. Uh, or what your journey or what you've just put in there. And I think the thing with the group as well, people are so honest and transparent about what they're doing and everyone is just backing each other. Yeah. everyone wants what's best for each other all the time yeah sorry it just makes me so happy when you think about the. they are they're such a beautiful community and i was saying to you i wrote an email yesterday about the filming for the app and everything like that and i said in this email if you're looking for a 14 day shred or two weeks of hit fat blasting belly fat definitely don't join the my coach school because that is not the place for you we do not bullshit you we do not bullshit you do we? No. And I just said that in an email. When I said it, I was like, that is so right. We're not here to run you into the ground. We're here to create a better, healthier life. Yeah. And that's what the, that's what the Facebook group's all about. And I think that's the, the community has that element to it. And everyone knows why they're there. Everyone, everyone's, and the people there, if you've heard bullshit or you've heard misleading stuff, the people in the Facebook community, the micro school, will happily inform you on what is correct. Yeah. And they're very well educated because obviously the singing is from the same hymn sheet as us mm-hmm. which is great that's why i just love i love the facebook group i think it's one of the best things about the community that we built built together and if you want to join it you can head over to the facebook page is is the micro school and we are going to be running the challenge from middle of april hopefully or just after the middle of april yeah. uh, you can currently join the waiting list to be informed about the challenge there's also going to be a 50 percent off code in there i'll leave the link in the show notes so you can jump on that waiting list yeah amazing so we hope you enjoyed this episode can i, can I just do one more thing yeah. Can I just try your glasses on to see what it looks like? No, not now. Please, just one. I so genuinely can can't really see very well. The uh, well guys, the people podcast. who are listening, we obviously have yeah. a YouTube oh, channel. Oh, yes, don't so forget to jump ben, over to the YouTube channel because I've got loose glasses on. Ben wants to put my glasses on. He, yeah. I mean, they don't fit you very well, but Why? I really, it's actually so hard. You know, you've, been ha- you've got glasses on for like two oh. hours and then you take, you're really having a little bit of a shitmare there, aren't you? Um, But yeah, as always, guys, With thank there. you so much. How for do you wear these, by the way? I look like Anne Frank or something. I've got a long sighted eye and a short sighted eye, so I get really bad headaches. Do I look like you now? You do look like me. Oh, hello. But as okay. I would. Lucy Davis, kombucha, bread, gym shark, I train glutes. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you know me so well. You know, I've been together for years. I just so summarised you in a absolute heartbeat there, haven't I? Yeah. Um, wow, well, cannot see. Okay. But um, yeah, if you've enjoyed this episode, please. Leave a review. Oh my God, nearly forgot about the podcast. We'll say that in next week's, I think, because we've got to say it's start next week. It's not the right time. Okay. I've made an executive decision. We're going to announce something very special on next week's podcast.
No, I'm going to say it now. We're going to leave it at the start of this podcast anyway on, on another bit. But um, basically, we are doing a podcast giveaway exclusive only to the YouTube channel. So if you listen to this on iTunes or Spotify, you will need to head over to the YouTube channel, which is the Not So Fit Couple podcast. The, the competition that we're going to be running is for a load of sick supplements. We're going to throw a goodie box together for you, which is going to be worth a couple of hundred pounds. If you would like to win that, and we'll probably give you a free space on the My Coach School, My Coach School the next challenge, which is the Back to the Gym Challenge, then all you need to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave a, a decent review, preferably, on one of the videos, maybe this video that you're watching now. We're going to be running it through all through April. Mm-hmm. We're choosing the win at the end of April. So the only two things you need to do is leave a, a comment on the YouTube channel and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify. Make sure you head over there. Again, we'll leave the YouTube channel link in the show notes. I'm Lucy Davis. You are Ben Holden. We are the Not So Thick Couple. See you later. Bye, guys. <laughs>